Welcome, welcome, <clears throat> excuse me, to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we try to make sense of this ever-changing Arizona real estate market, where it really hasn't been changing that much. <clears throat> excuse me while I take a drink of this god-awful Arizona tap water. <clears throat> Speaking of which, we're going to talk about water uh, towards the end of this show today. So, <clears throat> what's going on? Well, we're starting to see some tiny, tiny changes in uh, inventory in homes below 3,000 square feet. So I'm going to share that with you with the Cromford Report. And before we get started, though, <clears throat> be sure and hit that like button because YouTube has yet made another change. And if you hit the like button, your neighbor's dog will start stop barking. So now if you don't have a dog next door, just push the, the like button for the greater good. Those YouTube guys are so clever. Today, 5,119 homes on the market. That's about 300 more than what we saw last week. So that's a good sign, but it's tiny. On the seven-day moving average, I'll pull it up on my handy-dandy spreadsheet here. We have 4,297 homes hit the market and 3,877 go under contract. If I loop back and compare it to last year, which is where this yellow arrow is, we had 4,088 come on last year with 3,971 go under contract. So basically what we've seen is that the number of homes going under contract are declining a little bit and uh, a few more homes are coming on the market. Nothing major. Um, so what we're going to look at though is some of the numbers that the Cromford market is seeing right now and they're saying things and they're really talking about what they've seen just in the past few days. Now this, this is going to be hard to read so I'm just going to go ahead and read it for you and it says that although supply remains very low by normal standards demand has weakened enough to allow inventory to start trending upwards and it said this has been really noticeable for the last three days and the number of active listings in greater phoenix is 13.4 percent higher than this time last year this is the highest year over year increase in supply we've had for several years and it says we have been focusing on supply for the slightest indications of a break in the market's fever. And this is the most significant sign we have found. As yet, it's a major change that will barely be perceptive in the real world. But mathematics suggests we're entering a proper cooling phase. And I'd be surprised if this not become more significant as the second quarter progresses. So what we're seeing is we're seeing that the effect of interest rates are affecting sales in homes below 3,000 square feet, which is considered, you know, the majority of the market and the um, and starter homes entry level. So we're starting to see, we're not getting more listings coming on board. So pe we aren't having more people list their homes. It's just that sales are starting to drop off a little bit and they've dropped off double digit in just a few days. So that's that's a, a good thing if you're a buyer and a seller, don't, don't panic. We, we've got a long way to go and I'm going to show you. Because right here, you can see here, this is what he's talking about here. It jumped up to 47.60, and uh, and it was at 45.53, but the chart is going up. And here's where we were in 2021, October, 7,410. So we have a long way to go. Now, if you look at the Cromford Market Index, see that blue line down here on the bottom? That's considered balanced. It's not in favor of buyers. It's not in favor of sellers. It's a balanced market. And here we are way up here. Now, we dipped way down here in October 2021. We've been going up steadily ever since with a slight dip in the Crawford Market Index starting to come down. But you can see that that's a lofty mountain to come down from. And if you look over here in 2018, see this little dip right there? That's when the central bank started hiking rates and uh, the market had what they called a taper tantrum. The market was starting to, central bank was starting to taper back their bond buying and raising interest rates and the market would have none of it. And the effect was immediate. Well, the interest rate hike that we have now is far, far greater than anything we've seen since the 70s. And so this impact is going to be huge. In fact, the, the Fed minutes come out on Wednesday and you're starting to see some of the pricing hit the uh, mortgage market already. They're assuming uh, they've already worked in another uh, interest rate hike. So so you're going to see Fed minutes probably going to come out and say, yeah, we're pretty much drilled in. We're going to go up another uh, 
uh, half a percentage point. So usually by the time that's announced, the markets have already cooked it in. But this one might be a little more aggressive. We don't know. So Wednesday's going to be interesting. What we are seeing also is that uh, investor traffic is not slowing down. Um, you know, I've seen some comments, and I think it's correct from people that are saying that, look, when you're looking at uh, a Fed fund rate or a mortgage interest rate that's, you know, 4.5%, um, and inflation's almost near 10, until those numbers switch, so the Fed's going to have to make the cost of borrowing money higher than inflation in order to cool this fear that we're in. So that's what we're going to be watching. We're going to see what happens there and see if this trend, this little short, tiny little trend in uh, buyer activity is going to start slowing down as we get into the uh, the next quarter. Now, rent dolls, what are happening to rent prices right here? Look at that. They're going down, folks. They're going down. They went from $1.35 per square foot to $1.33. Whoop de doo, right? Well, a downtrend in the rental market is uh, going to be the precursor to investors maybe starting to back off. But this uh, this is driven mainly by multifamily housing, uh, kind of overbuilding, and they haven't all hit the market yet because a lot of the permits are showing that there's a lot more building coming. But starting to see that little glimmer of hope, and we'll take all we can get, right? And uh, unless you're an investor, then you're not liking that news. Bottom line, talking about interest rates, the recent spike will almost certainly continue to contribute to a slower pace of home price growth. Now, remember, <clears throat> it's going to slow the home price growth, not the home prices. In other words, we're, they're not seeing prices coming down. It remains to be seen if prices will actually decline. One thought-provoking question for those of you who are turned into the tuned into the property market during the financial crisis is this if i told you the average buyer in 2005 to 7 and 2022 that their home would lose 20 percent of its value over the next few years would you care more this isn't to say the home prices are invincible simply at the market dynamics and underlying loan program availability are quite different compared to the financial crisis now i put together something uh for you folks and uh People are always asking me, you know, should I wait a year? Um, should I wait two years? And I have no idea. I really don't know what to tell you. Um, I can just tell you what I'm seeing now and what trends to watch and what those indicators may, may, may do. But on Friday with my call with Pat, I stressed the point that you need to put out your own scenarios, kind of like when you're planning a vacation. In other words, if you want to wait a year, Go ahead and do some calculations and say, what if I wait a year and what if prices do go down 25% but interest rates go up a percent and a half? So I built a spreadsheet for you folks so that you can do this. And here's how it works. So here's scenario one, today's rate and price, right? So I'm showing a purchase price of 450000 an interest rate of 4.8, and then it gives you a total monthly payment of 1878 Okay, now you can change your monthly property tax amount here uh, down in the bottom right hand corner. But then in the bottom here, you can enter a price change. Here I put in minus 25%. Then where the yellow box is, you can change the interest rate. So play some what if. What if prices go down 10% but interest rates stay flat? What if prices go down 25% but interest rates go up a percent and a half? Percent and, a half? and look what happens here. It gives you a difference here. Oh, I don't know why that says B. There's a problem there. So I'm going to fix that formula before I send it out. Here's one here that says enter the price change. They're going to go up 5%. Interest rates went up 6%. That's going to affect you by $388 a month. Do Vegas has just saw two homes in Ahwatukee around 1,700 square feet. One sold for $70,000 over and another $90,000 over act asking. Yeah, the little tick that we've seen in three days, trust me, that is not going to stop the overbidding situation. It's going to be a while. It's probably going to be a few months before we see that. So anyway, if you'd like to have this uh, spreadsheet sent over to you, just send me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. I'll be happy to zip it over to you. Don't worry, it won't put you on a spam list or anything. Um, nav roaming, how accurate are Zillow's valuations? Well, Zillow, let me put it this way. Zillow used their Zestimate 
to buy houses. In other words, they let, let's say they looked at your house and it was $480,000 on their estimate. That's what they gave you for an offer. And they lost $580 million last quarter. That's how accurate their estimates are. They're so inaccurate that even when they relied on them, they lost money. They're terrible. <clears throat> if you really want to know your home's value, you've got to start looking at a lot of resources. So if, I would look at Zillow because everybody does. I'd take a look at Redfin. I'd pull up Realtor.com. Um, I would just take a look at uh, listings around your neighborhood and see what they're going for. Um, but if you really want an accurate list, because remember, Zillow doesn't know if you remodeled your kitchen or not. Um, they don't know uh, just how good your backyard is. They don't know if you have a fresh coat of paint or not. They just go by tax records. So um, any online home value uh, calculator is not going to be worth a dime. Now, we have one called Real Property Resources where we can pull up your house and we can pull up the recent sales and we can move a little sliding bar that says yours is better than this or this one's better than yours or worse than yours. Is the market cold, medium, or hot? And it gets us closer. But when you're looking at prices in a market as hot as this one is, <clears throat> what you really want to do is you want to look at a price range. Don't get sucked into this thing where somebody's going to come in, sit down in your house and go, $485,000. They don't know. I mean, realtors don't set prices. And they only set prices because you're telling them to set the price. Because you, you don't want to be part of that decision-making process. I'm not scolding you. But don't make the realtor the one to set the price. Make sure that the two of you have a very active conversation about what's going on in the market so that you know where your home fits in that price range. Because as you just saw what Du Vegas said, um, one sold for seventy thousand over and one ninety thousand over. Well, I guarantee you, one of them, the agent probably said, "Oh, you're worth six hundred thousand dollars." And guess what? It sold for six eighty. So, and everybody's like, "Oh, he got me more than my asking price." The market got you more than your asking price. The realtor didn't do it. I'd like to think I could. Our job is to market your home to get it in front of as many people as we possibly can, and then the market takes over from there. Right now, the market is strong. There's still a lot of overbidding. There's a lot of stuff going on out there that makes it really easy for you to sell your home. So find a range. And let's say, because there's one I'm looking at that's like, it's got a range of like 380 to 405. Okay. Well, where do you want to price it, Mr. Home Seller? Because you know what? If we price it too low, odds are they're going to bid you up like they just did a couple of these homes in Ahwatukee. So there really isn't a whole lot of risk there. Um, <clears throat> now, when you're out buying, go through that calculator and kind of start doing your own scenarios and stuff. Uh, but the other thing that uh, that I saw yesterday on the news, um, let's see, I want to make sure I'm not skipping anything here, is uh, water shortage. And I want to I want to talk about this for just a second. Let me show this to you. I'll put this on here. I'm going to turn off my microphone so it doesn't pick up the noise. Oh, and wouldn't you know it? It's going to give me a, a commercial here. Hold on. There we go. Another Arizona community is now face to face with a critical water shortage. Pine and strawberry say that they are drastically short on water, completely dried up for some homes. Today, the water district laid it out for the community. We're all over the state tonight with team coverage. Meteorologist Lindsay Riley is standing by with the latest on our drought conditions. But first, let's start with Team 12's William Pitts, who continues our Scorched Earth series from Pine Strawberry. This isn't exactly where you would expect to have a water shortage, but there is. Wells are drying up. The water district isn't hooking up any more customers, and they're still using far more water than they have. There's a water tank up there. A water tank that served William Green for six years until it didn't. When you get that sickening hollow ring to it, it's like, oh, no. One day, the Greens turned on the tap, and nothing happened. Well, we turned on the tap, no water, and we thought something must be wrong with the water line. The line was fine. The well had run dry. We have snowpack here in the winter. We have the, like the monsoon rains. Uh, never ever thought. I mean, if we ever thought of that, we certainly wouldn't move here. Because without water, which is what? Well, that's the bad news, huh? What running out of water up there? Where is Pine? So let me show you where this is in relationship to Phoenix. Um, this is Phoenix down here, and uh, this is Pine up here. It's in the 
up north of Payson, and Payson's kind of seeing the same problem. It's a pine and strawberry are two beautiful communities where a lot of people own own cabins, and they're having a severe water shortage because their underground wells are drying up. They rely on snowpack. We've had very little snow up there this year. So water is going to be a problem in a lot of the outlying areas. Not only is it bad here, but it's bad over here in Prescott. You know, Prescott like biscuit. So water is going to be a problem. And uh, um, in this town, Pine and Strawberry, the, the city is basically saying, well, we don't have any money to do anything about it. People are just shaking their heads. Uh, am I telling you not to buy in Pine and Strawberry? Well, I'm telling you, be very careful and uh, make sure you know whether or not there's uh, any water issues with your well because that's something to consider. And there's a, I know I have a lot of good friends that have uh, cabinets up there and that's very distressing when you're out of water. You don't have a lot of choices. Most of them up there are wells. Uh, there's city water in downtown Payson and stuff. But uh, uh, when the well goes dry, there isn't a whole lot that you can do. Now, let's wait for the Fed minutes on Wednesday and see what an impact that is going to have on our interest rates. They are going up. I don't see them going down all year. Uh, can I predict? No, because Realtor.com told us that rates were going to be 347 by the end of the year, and we're already knocking on five's door. We got a quiet signal comment. How much higher is insurance for a swimming pool property? I haven't run into a higher insurance uh, policy because I had a pool. Um, maybe somebody else in comments say that they did, but um, that I didn't see an impact in that. I also didn't see an impact in in my water bill either because <clears throat> when you look at having green grass in the back and plants where you've got to irrigate them versus water and evaporation, I found the pool was actually cheaper. So <laughs> once I uh, started putting in a lawn and watering, man, the party was over. So everybody take on the day and have a great week. And we'll just continue to watch the rates. And if you want that spreadsheet, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com right after you hit the like button. Thanks. Yeah.